Awesome. Welcome, everybody. Good to see Well, I can't see any of you, but I assume you're there. Good to have you all there. Let's go out and let's start class. Ready? Shoot. Shoot it. Johnny. Makto Shumbi. Makto Shijak. Makto Baro. Shoot. Shoot it. Johnny. Awesome, everybody. Run the back. Tumbe. We're going to start off with some nice and light V-stepping, making sure I'm stepping out on those angles. If I step out with my left, my left hand goes forwards. If I step out with my right, my right hand goes forwards. The other hand should be still floating high. As I V-step now, let's pick up the pace a little bit, trying to drive off that back leg a little bit more. You can even hover over the ground just a little bit to get more of that kind of oomph in that step. As we step, we're going to let that knee almost touch the ground now. Nice. Coming back, we're going to be step backwards now. Instead of stepping forwards on the angle, we're stepping back on the angle with the new back leg. My center line hand should be coming forwards. Nicely done. We're going to make an X now. So you're doing a V step forwards, then a V step backwards. And back to forwards, back to backwards. Just drawing an X on the ground. Nicely done, everybody. Shaking everything out. On your back, please. Go. Good. Feet just flat on the floor. We're going to start nice and light with sit ups. You can have your hands on your legs to make it easier. Cross your chest for just like average. Hands at your temples, a little bit harder. Masochistic, get your hands up above your head. Really masochistic, start doing these sit ups and kind of like find what's comfortable for you. I say comfortable, find what's at your level and go for it from there. Awesome, from there, we're gonna lie on our side. Bottom leg is straight out below us, top leg is gonna wrap over top. Your hands don't really matter. I like to have one hand on my side, one hand up. We're gonna do obliques. We're just curling up into the side. I'm trying to crunch my shoulder to my top leg. Nice. Swing that leg over. We're gonna do a windmill change if you have room. If not, that's okay. Lying on the ground, bottom leg out, top leg over top. Hand is up, hand on side, and obliques on the other side. Nicely done, everybody. Tax, we got to go. Run the back. Two legs. Alternating high rise and heel kicks. Just start nice and low. Gradually work those legs up. As you get comfortable, really start trying to push that height, but gradually so, in order to allow your legs to properly warm up, they don't like snap a hamstring like a cold elastic band. I don't think that's possible. But this will crash at some point. Awesome. From there, just inside outside knees, get the hips moving a little bit. A little bit lower momentum than your swing kicks. Helps just get things moving. Nice. From here, full on inside outside swing kicks. Get that back leg all the way up and through using the hips to pull that leg across. And use your hips to open it back up. Bring the leg across, hips to open. Hips to close. Hips to open, hips to close, hips to open. If you don't have room, continue with those swinging knees. All good. Nice, good on everybody shaking everything out. Whew. All right, run the back. Two, three. Boxing drill set one. Quick review jab, cross, duck and weave, cross, hook. Uppercut. As we keep doing this, making sure every movement except the jab, I'm shifting my weight, I'm shifting my center line, so I'm not just staying in front of that person, 
I'm on either side, just by that little bit. Jab, cross, duck and weave, cross, hook, uppercut. Even though you don't have anything to hit, maybe you do, I don't know, siblings, I'm kidding, I didn't say that. You wanna make sure you're adding some oomph to those strikes by using your body and shifting into that hit. Shift, shift, shift. A little bit of extra impact on each strike. Nice, shaking it all out. Let's do a quick elbow review. I know we're moving quick, and if you're still figuring out boxing, just stay there. Other back, two minutes. Okay, elbows one, two, three, and four. Take my back arm, tuck it in, load my stance, lift as I hit up, elbow one. Bring the hand high, drop as I hit down, elbow two. Hit back, elbow three. C step forwards, set it just like a hook, rotate, elbow four. Let's do that other side. Elbow one, lift, elbow two, roll, elbow three, C step. Elbow four, just keep switching. Lift for one, drop for two, twist for three, set, rotate for four. Lift, one, drop, two, rotate, three, set, rotate again, four. One more time on each side. Nice, everybody shaking out those hands. All right, find a comfy spot on the floor, hopefully a yoga mat or carpet, or matting if you actually have it. We're gonna work on our back brace balls a little bit. We're gonna do something sitting to begin with, so it's not too impactful on us if we have to work on hardwood or tile. Watch your tailbone if that is the case. So, I just wanna start by rocking back and forth, hips to shoulder blades and back. As I rock back, feet are gonna explode up. We're just trying to get the hips off the ground here. As the hips explode up, hands hit the ground. If you're on a hard surface, maybe just like touch the ground, just whoop, the palms should be down. Now we've got that lifting motion, we're going to start moving our legs out at a 45 degree angle so we can keep somebody away from us or encourage them not to get closer. Stick your feet in the way. Stick your feet in the way. Stick your feet in the way. Nicely done. Let's do a little bit of core while we're on the ground. So we're going to line our backs, lift our legs up. You can have hands on the ground, hands underneath your butt, on your core, whatever works. You're just gonna start pushing your feet straight up to the ceiling. I've always known this as a reverse sit-up. It may or may not be the actual name of this though. All that I know is I love it and it's kind of awful. It's really good for you though. Bit of a lower core workout. Nicely done, check you get up and run the back. Very good. Alright, let's work on some more footwork here. Left, right, forwards and backwards, all using stepping glides. If I move forwards, lift the front leg, I push off the back leg. Here's the reverse, if you go backwards, lift the back, push with the front. Stepping glide forwards, stepping glide back. To go right and left, I'm gonna lift my right leg, push off my left leg to get to the right. Just the opposite on the way back. Lift the left, push off the right, to the right, or to the left. I totally can tell my lefts and rights. Absolutely, 100%, never make that mistake. What are you talking about? Step and glide forwards, step and glide back, step and glide right, step and glide left, forwards, backwards, right, left, forwards, backwards, right, left, very good. Step and glide forwards, jab, step and glide back, cross. Let's do it again. Step and glide forwards, jab, step and glide back, cross. Step the leg to the right. All oh, the weights on our back leg again, so let's go to the cross. Step the leg left, the weights on our front leg. Let's do a close range strike. Hook, right, set, cross, left, set, hook. Let's do all four now. Step the leg forwards, jab, back, cross, right, cross, left, hook. One more time, forwards, jab, back, cross, Right, cross, left, hook. If you have no idea what your lefts and rights are, totally okay. Feel which leg has the weight. Right now it's my back leg, because I move towards that direction, I throw a back hand punch. I move the other direction, my weight's on that front leg, so I'm gonna throw a lead hand punch. 
Nicely done, everybody. Shaking everything out. Run me, run the back, to me. All right, from here, we're gonna do our front snap kicks. Chamber the leg, point the foot, stick the toes back, raptor claw that thing. Alternating front snap kicks. Really making sure you've got chamber, kick, re-chamber, back. Chamber, kick, re-chamber, back. All right, I'm gonna assume that you guys have it down. I can't see, so I can't tell. But we're gonna start adding doubles in there. Chamber low, kick low, re-chamber. Lift the chamber up high, kick high, and back. One kick, two kick, foot back to the ground. Low, high, front snap. Low, high, front snap. All right. Nice. One more. Good job, everybody. You're shaking everything out. All right, let's go on to our side break fall. We're going to start sitting down once again. So, stick my legs out on the ground. Choose one leg, doesn't matter. I'm going to pull that leg in nice and close. I got a straight leg, so I'm going to straighten that same arm. It's not going to the ground, though. It's staying beside me. I'm going to fall this direction, but I'm not falling backwards. I just did a weird back break fall. I'm going to fall towards that side. So I fall down, shoulder hits, then hand. Other hand up, and I'm on my side. I'm not lying on my back. I'm going to be up on my side. I sit up again, pull the other leg in. My first leg is straight, stick that arm out, fall that direction, sitting side break fall. Come on back up, set up, sitting side break fall. Really making sure my shoulder hits the ground, then my hand. My shoulder hits the ground, then my hand. Good. We're look, feeling pretty good about that one. Maybe aren't on tile or hardwood or comfortable landing on those things. We're going to go to our standing side break ball. Take my back leg and we'll swing that leg out. As I do, I'm trying to sit down on that same butt cheek. So swing, sit, shoulder hit. Oh, familiar. Let's do it again. Stoke my right leg back. Swing, swing and sit. Side break ball. Nice. Tax will get up from there. Hands are up. Let's do the other side. The left leg is back. Swing that leg out. Sit on that butt cheek. Side break ball. I'm still on my side. Knee is up. Foot's protecting my groin. Hand is up in case I need to protect my head. This hand is stabilized. Nice. Tax will get up. Let's do one more on each side. Right leg's back. Swing the leg. Sit. Break ball. Left leg is back. Swing the leg, sit, break ball. Nicely done, everybody. Whew. Shaking it all out. All right, brother back, to me. See. Okay, we are gonna work a little bit on our kicking. To do that, I want you to work on what's called a replacement step. So, if I bring my back leg to my front leg, and then I'm gonna step out with my front leg. Kind of on a bit of a line here, kind of follow the angle of my stance. Back leg comes to front leg, or front leg steps out. So to go backwards, front leg to back leg, back leg steps out. Let's switch sides and try it again. Back leg to front leg, front leg steps out. Front leg to back leg, back leg steps out. Replacement step forwards, replacement step back. So switch sides, replacement step forwards, replacement step back. Okay, change target on the ground in front of you. Moving sideways a little bit, so as I step, I have to kick back to center. If I kick here, that's my target, I miss, oh dear. So, target's right here, replacement step, point kick to the center, come on back, switch sides. Replacement step, point kick to the center, come on back, switch. Replacement step, point kick, come on back. Replacement step, point kick, come on back. Replacement step, point kick. Come on back. Replacement step. Point kick. Come on back. Nicely done. Let's do this a little bit differently now. So as I replacement step, I'm trying to face that direction and just front snap kick. Come on back. Replace. Bring the knee up. Front snap. Switch. Replace. Bring the knee up. Front snap. Switch. Replace. Front snap. Replace. Front snap. Replace. Front snap. This is really important because if you are able to move and then hit, it makes you a harder target to be hit, which is always kind of nice. I like not getting hit if possible. It doesn't always work out that way, 
but one can try. That's all good. All right, everybody, shaking your hands and feet out. All right, roll back. Two, three, see. Okay, what I want you guys to work on. Let's start feet neutral. If you remember your cross palm blocks, bring those hands up, wall exchange, cross palm. Wall exchange, cross palm. Cross palm, cross palm. Cross palm, cross palm. Good. Start with your hands down now. Bring that hand up, cross palm block. My right hand blocked here. My left hand is going to come underneath. Notice how it's closer to the camera. It's not behind my arm, it's in front of the arm, and continues to move away. Come back. Cross palm with the left. Right hand goes to the outside, pushes away. Cross palm, windmill. Cross palm, windmill. Cross palm, windmill. This is a two-stage block. What is it good for? Hand speed. What it also is good for is clearing an arm for counter strike. So, cross palm block with my left. Right hand underneath, clear. My left hand is free now for a punch. Cross palm with the right. Left hand underneath, punch. Cross palm, clear, 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 punch. This is really just a fun hand speed drill. Is it practical? Maybe against a wall? Meh, not really practical otherwise, but training that hand speed is practical because if you can move your hands faster and more accurately, that's always a bit of a plus. Good job, everybody. Shaking it all out. Okay, we're gonna do a real quick front shoulder roll review. If you are not in a safe space to work on your shoulder rolls, that's okay. Work on your sitting break pulse. Continue working on your blocking. And that's totally fine. If you have the ability to shoulder rolls, we're gonna start nice and small, kneeling down, sitting on my heel. My left knee is up, so I'm gonna roll over that left shoulder. The first thing I want you to check, where is my knee? Right here, it's in front of my face, I don't like that. My elbow should be inside the knee, so my knee is to the outside. From here, tuck head down, away from that knee, and fall forwards as I do. I lift my bum way up in the air, shoulder roll. Let's do it again. My right knee is up, so I'm rolling over that right shoulder. Notice how my knee's to the outside, my elbow's to the inside. Hands on the ground, tuck chin, I'm getting my head out of the way of that shoulder, lean forwards, fall into that shoulder roll. Let's do one more per side. From here, tuck, lean, elbows on the inside, knee to the outside, hands down. Lift my bum, shoulder roll. Let's do one more. Got my right knee up, hands are on the ground, elbows to the inside, tuck, lean, bum up in the air. Shoulder roll. I see it on everybody. Shaking out them legs. Run back. To me. See. Okay, so everybody remember their puck walk, their leg switch. Right here. I just move my legs. I jump that little bit, like a fraction of a millimeter off the ground, slide my legs so the other leg's in front. Puck walk. Puck. Puck walk. Puck. Awesome. What we're going to do now, as I do that puck walk, I'm trying to take my new back leg. So right now, my left leg's in front. I switch it so it's behind. I'm going to try and push off of that leg. So I move forwards. See that again. I switch. I push off of that leg. Right now, my right leg is in front. I switch. I push off that leg. And now I've moved forwards. Switch, push. Switch, push. Awesome. So if you've got a feeling for that energy, where you're pushing into the ground, we're going to use that now. We're not going to just move. Oh. We're not going to move. We're going to push our leg forwards so that it can come out with a front snap kick. Another way to use footwork to improve the power of your kicks. Switch, drive, front snap kick. Switch, drive, front snap. Awesome. Switch, drive, front snap. Left leg's in front. I switch so behind. I push off it and kick with it. Right leg in front. Switch, push, drive. Switch, push, drive. Switch, push, drive. Nicely done, everybody. Shaking everything out. Looks like we're coming up to the end of our time. Really quick before Coach's Corner and Lucto, I want you guys, if you have a chance, to work on some balancing. So, we're going to squat down nice and low. 
I've got this little bit of a divot on the inside of my knee. I'm going to try and attach my elbow to each of those divots. Hands go to the ground. Now, I'm going to lean forwards. My head stays off the ground. As I lean forwards, my weight is set so that I'm supporting my legs with my elbows. Once when I get here and I'm feeling comfortable, one foot comes off the ground. As I continue to feel comfortable, other foot. If I fall, whoo, that's okay. Just try it again. Side view, elbows bracing knee. Lean forwards. One foot comes off the ground as you feel comfortable. Then slowly bring that other foot and see if you can balance there. Just your hands on the ground. This is your monkey stand. Or I know it is a monkey stand. Could be wrong. Keep in mind, if you've got hardwood and you fall forwards, it's your forehead um, out. So if you've got carpet or something you're comfortable landing on, brilliant. This is a really good way to build up some ability to balance through your hands, which is helpful for your handstands. Thank you so much, everybody. Let's muck you out. Heels together, hands at sides. Ready. Shoop. Chidip. Kanye. Makuto jumbi. Makuto shuja. Awesome, thank you so much for tuning in everybody. Today I wanted to talk about one of my bike stories. I don't know if I've told this one yet. Um, kind of a fun one. So a couple springs ago, you know Calgary is legendary for its weird and random thaw and refreeze cycles and that really affects some of the pathways that are close to the river valley where all the runoff goes towards so that the Bow River gets a little more full. But um, there's a lot of banks and steep banks leading to pathways. So all the water drains onto those pathways and then solidifies. You've got this angled sheet of ice. It's a little scary. It's very slippery. So I'm doing one of my bike rides. I go out from my parents' place to downtown, just kind of following the one side of the river. Now this side of the river always got the sun. So the path, super clear, very beautiful. All the grass is tons of water from all the rain or all the snow melting. So it's green, it's lush, it smells amazing. It was awesome. I decided to bike back on the other side of the river. And I'm on one of those pathways that doesn't get a whole lot of sun. There's a bunch of trees right there and it's a big hill, which of course the snow melts, gets onto the pathway during the warmth, but the sun isn't there for that long. So it doesn't go all the way to the river. It starts to settle on the pathway and builds up layer after layer of ice. It's a slight hill, so that ice is angled. And I get to some of this ice, and I'm riding along, and I'm going super slow. I'm like, oh man, this is sketchy. And of course, whoop, I slip, I fall, I'm on my side. I'm like, oh, this, this sucks. It's not safe to ride my bike. So I get off my bike. I get off the ground and pick my bike up, and I'm trying to use a fence and walk my way along this pathway until I can find a safe way out. And I find a gap in the fence, so I ease my bike through. I go through this little gap. And I end up kind of crossing the train tracks and on a really muddy trail, like super muddy. There's no other way through. The trees on either side, just this super deep muddy path. And I'm like, okay, I've only got one option here. So I hop on my bike and I start biking. Now mud is very difficult to bike, at least for me. The tires sink right in, you don't get a whole lot of traction. So I'm sitting there pedaling really fast as my rear wheel is spinning and it's just pushing me through the mud very slowly. I'm getting coated in mud, my bike's coated in mud. I'm like, oh, this is such a workout. I hate being covered in mud. I'm just dirty and wet and soaked and dirty and cold and not having a great time. And I keep pedaling and pedaling. And after about 20 minutes of super hard work, I get back to a main pathway, back on pavement, and I'm starting to bike home. And I'm like, man, that was slog. That was awful. I don't want to do that again. And I come up to home road. I'm about to cross it to climb up the final hill home. And I'm like just down on myself and feeling super awful about being coated in mud when this off-road truck drives by on home road, also covered in mud. And I guess these guys had gone out and had a wicked time driving through some deep mud in the mountains. And they see me covered in mud on my bike and they start hooting and hollering and having a great time. I'm like, I mean, I guess I, it could have been a little bit of fun, maybe a little bit of fun. I feel kind of proud that I biked through the mud. And just through their enthusiasm about, yeah, being in mud, being dirty is awesome, kind of changed my perspective a little bit. And all of a sudden I'm like, you know what? Maybe that wasn't so bad. Maybe that was a little fun. And it was kind of cool because just that little bit of shift and somebody else's enthusiasm about it kind of got me going, you know what? Maybe that was okay. 
So if you have tons of enthusiasm, don't be afraid to share it with the people around you. Occasionally that can really help them. And you know, if other people enjoy getting covered in mud, sometimes it's not a bad idea. Don't go outside, get covered in mud and bring it inside though, just saying. Thank you so much for tuning in everybody. I'll turn it back to Instructor Lucas for the announcements. Have a fantastic evening. Stay safe out there everyone. Namaste.